Hi there, and welcome to QImage Ultimate 2025. This video is going to be a relatively short demonstration of the new features and just going through some of the highlights of the 2025 edition. So let's start out by talking about AI Copilot. The AI Copilot is something that was put in last year and it has a lot of options in here. I won't go through all these because the options are the same, it's just that the Copilot itself has been upgraded. And the first way that it was upgraded is that it now supports new Canon printer models like the Pro 1100 series. Uh, so those are now included in AI Copilot. We'll keep an eye on what you're doing in the driver and automatically manage color and all of those features that were included on other printers. Um, so let me take a look here at some of the things that are new with the Copilot itself. Uh, in addition to supporting some new printer models, it is also much more informative. And I'll give you an example here. We have a printer profile that's in use for this printer. Uh, and if we change it to, if we change the color management to let the driver manage color, that's going to require a change in the driver. You have to go in there and change the color management mode in the driver. Well, QImage handles that automatically for you. And before, when you change the mode, it would give you a pop-up like this, but all it would say is a driver AI fixed something in the driver. It wouldn't tell you what it was. Well, now it's telling you exactly what it did. So when you get this pop-up, you can hold your mouse over it, and that's the reason for the new little progress gauge here, is that it tells you when this dialog disappears automatically. And it does that so that it stays out of your way. You don't have anything that you have to click on. But if you put your mouse over this dialog before it, before it counts down, you can catch it like this and just read what it says if you need more time, which is helpful for this video because I can show you that it says fixed color management mode. Well, that makes sense because we changed the color management mode in the software, so it has to be changed in the driver to match. Otherwise, you're going to get some gaudy looking prints. Um, let me give you another example. And this is where it really comes in handy. If you're in the driver and let's say you have the feature turned on to automatically select the highest quality prints, I'll go in here and change it to something lower quality and just click OK. Now this comes up here and I'll put my mouse over it so that it sticks so we can read it. It says quality set to highest available for current media. So not only does it now tell you what it actually did, it actually overrode your selection there because it wasn't the highest quality but it also says click this dialog to open AI Copilot and when you do that when you click here it'll open AI Copilot and it also highlights the item here that's involved with the change that it just made so if you often print draft mode or you want to just take control of the resolution yourself and you don't want that option enabled you can quickly just uncheck that box and click OK and it'll never come up again so it's very convenient to be able to see exactly what's going on. I'll give you one more example, just real quick here. Uh, go into the driver, and I'll make, uh, this is a common mistake here um, that will get you in a lot of trouble. This output paper size, or printer paper size, uh, if you change it, uh, you might be tempted to change it to uh, like the same as the page size up here. But if you do that, the driver is going to scale everything you send to it, and it's, all your prints are going to be the wrong size. They're not going to be the size that QImage sent. They're going to be uh, actually enlarged a little bit um, because the, it's trying to fit the printable area of an 8.5 by 11 onto an actual 8.5 by 11 uh, printable area. So it's, it's scaling to try to get rid of this little bit of uh, difference here between the non-printable margins and the printable margins. Anyway, this is the wrong selection and it'll result in scaling in the driver, which you don't want. So if I go ahead and click OK on that, this comes up again and it says disable driver scaling. So this is what driver AI did, this one little bullet, disable driver scaling to prevent sizing issues. And if I click here, the item is selected here, or highlighted, prevent sizing conflicts. So it's just a very convenient way to figure out what AI Copilot is doing and you know the AI Copilot itself is being very open with exactly what's happening now. So that's a really helpful feature. Moving on, 
The next feature I wanted to point out is uh, we've done a lot of work with margins. And the first thing that we did is we found that people often want to just print a photo on a page and they want to specify the margins of the paper. Uh, like they want to they want to just print this print and they want a half inch margin on all sides. You could do that before, but it's just so much easier now. And I'll show you how that's done. I have this cat selected here and I'll go over to fit to margins. This is a new size here. You click on fit to margins and you can put in the total margin that you want here on the bottom. And I'll put in like 0.5 and this little button here copies it to all four sides just a convenient way. I could have typed 0.5 in all of the totals and it would have given me a total margin of 0.5, but it's just a quick way to do it. I click OK and you'll see that a couple things happen. First, the print was put on the page with a half inch margin, as you can see, let me select it, half inch margin on all four sides. And it also makes the fact that you have a user margin obvious by these little carrots in the corners here or not the corners, but on the edges of the paper, meaning you've added some margin. So now when we look at this live view, the darker gray here is hard margins. That's dictated by the driver and that cannot be changed. No software can print in that area because the driver dictates that. Next, you have a lighter, a little bit lighter uh, margin here, and that's your user margin. And that dictates where the print on the page goes. Uh, the reason this is so flexible now is with this still selected, I can change this now. Let me go back to fit to margins. And let's say for some reason I want a one inch border on the bottom. I want a little bit more on the bottom because I'm going to put something down there. I have a, an unequal uh, mat frame or something. So I'll just go down here and I'll type a one in there and click OK. And it resizes it. And you can see down here now that you have a one inch margin on the bottom and half inch on the other three sides. And if you want to keep going, th these margins stick and it makes it easy to, you know, go add more prints. Each print that you add by clicking on the little plus button here, uh, you're going to get a print that's that size. It's inch, inch on the bottom, just like we specified. Uh, so let me get rid of uh, a couple of these. Oh, I'll get rid of all of them and I'll show you that, um, you know, here, here on the draft page that just shows you the layout that's currently in effect. Um, you can see the, the different colors here. A uh, darker gray is your hard margin can't be changed unless you go into the driver and find a way to do it in the driver. These are dictated by the driver. These are your margins that you entered, the lighter gray and the white here, that's your printable area. Now this is a little bit, these margins are a little more versatile is a lot more versatile than most other software because other software, it, you can do this, like get half inch on three sides and one inch on the bottom. It's not that big a deal. But QImage also allows you to uh, put anything you want in there. So you can, you still have these margins in effect after you use this feature. And I could go in here and put, uh, you know, some wallets on the page and, you know, keep going. i just add a few here. Um, and now you have some wallets and they, they'll still conform to the margins that you specified. Um, and there, there's even, right now, I'm in telecenter mode, so it will center your prints on the physical paper. But QImage Ultimate also has a center, not in telecenter, but a regular center. If you click center, it'll center the prints within the margins. So if, you, if you're binding the paper here or something and you want, no matter what size you put in here, you want it to always center within the white area, you can do that as well. So very versatile. Again, we're trying to make things versatile, easy to use, you know, the maximum functionality that you can have and so you can do anything that you want. That's the whole you know, goal of QImage. So let me go back to IntelliCenter and I'll uh, just remove all. And I'll show you that the margins are now very easy to deal with. Number one, uh, realize that if, if you use this margins feature, then 
you come back tomorrow, and of course QImage will remember this. Next time you open QImage, it'll be in the same you know, state here. It'll have these margins that you entered. And you'll notice that 8 by 10 here is too large for the page. And you might think, you know, 8 by 10 should fit on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. But you can very quickly see that the margins are here. With these carrots and this extra border here, you can tell that there's margins in effect. So they, there won't be any, you know, question as to why you can't fit an 8 by 10 on here. And now it's so easy to change the margins that all you got to do is put your mouse in here and click. And then do clear margins and click OK and now your user margins are gone. Now you can go back to printing with the printer margins, you know, uh, no additional margins. And now you can fit, um, click a print and then do fit to page. Now you can fit a eight by 10.69, which is up here. So those are, are two really helpful features that will, you know, expand the versatility of what you can do with QImage and how fast you can do it. These, these margins are something that I found myself using when developing this uh, a lot. I mean, you can just put your mouse on this non-printable margin here for the, the printer's margin and click and put in any margins you want. Uh, or you can use the margins with the size option here. And the difference is you can, you can enter margins here anything that you want and it'll just modify the paper margins for you. When you're sizing by the margins, you fit your prints to the margin, it automatically, like if I put an inch on the bottom here, I add, add an inch margin total on the bottom here, it'll add the print also, not just do the margin. So this is kind of an, an all-in-one stop here, an all-in-one shop. So, uh, Again, click here. I can see that there's a margin because of this little indicator and the color. Click there, clear margins, OK, and now the margins are gone again. And now if I want to make this print expand to the size of the page without the margin, see that the print didn't change size there because the print was based on that one inch margin on the bottom. So you can see that the print doesn't fill the page. Well, that's as easy as clicking on the print and do fit to page again because now the page is bigger without your additional margin. So that's how all that works. Uh, just quickly, I'll show you one more thing here that's it's really helpful. You'll notice I have the Pro 1100 series printer selected here. And let's say I want to go find a profile. Uh, people like me and uh, Jose, uh, you know, he's, he's got his uh, group, his Facebook group, and he does a lot of different printers and profiles and everything. You can have a lot of profiles in here and it'd be hard to find profiles. So we put a search in here so that, let's say I type 1100 and now only the 1100 profiles show. Or I know that when I make profiles, I always put the name Argyle in it because I use Argyle software to create my custom profiles. So I can type Argyle and there's the custom profiles that I happen to have that I created. Um, so, you, I mean, you can search for, let's say, Luster. And there's every Luster profile for every printer. Now, it's, it's only a single search. It's not multiple terms. It's like a you know, file explorer search. Whatever you type, it'll find that word. But it's still extremely useful because you can really quickly get to what you need and be able to select you know, the, the profile that you want uh, very quickly. So that'll wrap it up for the, the main highlights. There's a lot of other things, the bug fixes and improvements and uh, visual optimizations and things like that in the 2025 edition, but this should uh, get you started and hope you enjoy the new features. Thanks for watching.